السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all his companions as well and to bless every single one of us and to make us from his true followers. Beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, yesterday we heard how the nation of Noah, may peace be upon him, Nuh alayhi salatu was was destroyed. And we heard the very vivid descriptions within the Quran. If you looked at the dua made by Nuh alayhi salatu was it was very detailed. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of all the description that the Prophet Noah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's peace be upon him, had made. Right at the end of the story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and us all with a reminder. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hud at the end of Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam's story, he says, ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الْغَيْبِ نُوحِيهِ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ إِذْ أَجْمَعُوا أَمْرَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَمْكُونَ In fact, that is a verse right at the end of Surah Yusuf, but the verse that is in Surah Hud, تِلْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الْغَيْبِ نُوحِيهَا ما كنت تعلمها ما كنت تعلمها أنت ولا قومك من قبل هذا فاصبر إن العاقبة للمتقين الله أكبر الله says to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم this that we have related to you the stories of the unseen which you have not seen, we have revealed it to you. Prior to this, neither did you know anything about Noah, nor did those around you know about these stories. It is us who told you. Subhanallah. So Allah is making mention of the favor upon us that we have revelation. That is a favor. We are sitting and reading a story. So authentic is the Quran that none of us have a speck of doubt as to the authenticity of the Quran in comparison with the other books. What a gift of Allah is that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today we are reading the Quran. I'm sure there are huffaf, there are people, so many from amongst us who have memorized it cover to cover. It is your right to correct anybody who makes a mistake because we want to protect the book. We need to protect this Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. After that, Allah says, the moral of the mentioning of the story of Noah to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is as follows. Fasbir, bear patience. Subhanallah. Which means these people in Mecca, they're going to trouble you. The kuffar of the time are going to hassle you. They're going to harass you. They're going to try and fight with you. They're going to do this and do that. And it's not going to be an easy task. It's uphill. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, here we've related to you a story of one of your brothers whom we had appointed as a messenger who was there for 950 years as a da'i, which means as a nabi. He called his people for 950 years. He lived well beyond that. He lived for more than a thousand years. Because it is reported that even after they came off the ark, he lived for another 150 odd years, according to some narrations. So which means he lived for a long, long time. One narration says 250 years. Those were people who had life, not like us. Not even a quarter of that. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Speaking about proportions and quarters, do you realize that one third of the Quran is already completed? Ramadan just started now then the other day. One third of the Quran has been recited and we've listened to it. Subhanallah. Before we know it, Ramadan will be over. So let us make the most of this beautiful month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. 
Now as time passed and the children of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, generations began to pass, they were talking to their children of, of how lucky they were as being from amongst those who were saved in the ark with Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. And then there came shaitan again. And the same plan once again, he began to show the people the worship of those besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given the people a lot. There was a lot of wealth. There was a lot of physical power and strength. But they began to worship idols once again. They began to worship stones and statues. And this is why in Islam, we are not allowed to have any statues, anything animate that is made up to put into our houses and so on. Because the angels of mercy do not enter the house where there are these animate items hanging or statues and so on. The reason is from the very beginning, Shaitan used that plan to deviate man. We have somebody's frame up there. Our children might not realize who this person was and what will happen. They might start bowing their heads and their children might start prostrating and we won't be there to tell them, you know what? We only put it because of X, Y, and Z. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So it's important for us to know when the Islamic rulings come, rather than try and say, I don't understand them and I am not going to adopt them until I don't understand or until I understand, we'd rather say, look, I surrender to it. Whether I know or not why it is there, the fact that it is a solid verse of the Quran, hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, law of the Sharia, we surrender to it. So now we find the children at the time, they were, as they were growing, they were growing bigger in size. They were growing bigger in size than those before them. Allahu Akbar. It reminds me of some of the youngsters today, 15 years and you're looking at him like this. You know, you got to greet him, salamu alaykum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. But at that time, they were tall, huge. Allah makes mention subhanahu wa ta'ala that these people were granted greater size than the people of Nuh. They were given more power than the first people. And they were granted gardens. They had so much. Allah makes mention of it in the Quran. These were the people of Ad. Ad. Where is it? It is the name of a place. Between Oman and Adan. Between Oman and Yemen. Close to Hadramaut. That area in the southern Arabian Peninsula, Middle Eastern region, these were the first Arabs, according to one narration. And what happened? They were so happy because Allah gave them wealth. Allah gave them strength. And they began to indulge. Over and above indulging, they forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they started worshipping things, stones and items. Shirk, engaging in shirk. So let's listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. In fact, a very important point that I've jotted down to make mention today is there are two surahs in the Quran named after these people. No other nation do you have two whole surahs named after them. One is you have surah Hud. Now Hud is the messenger. Allah was not going to say surah Ad. No, not at all. Because we don't want to name the, the surah after people who were destroyed. No. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the surah and we've been given the name as surah Hud. The surah where the story of Hud alayhi salam is mentioned. And this is why these stories of Hud and Saleh and so on, they are not mentioned in the Old Testaments because these are Arabian prophets, Arab prophets. Sometimes you won't find these names in the Old Testament and so on. However, the lesson is for us all. The other surah is surah Al-Ahqaf. Ahqaf meaning the sand dunes. They had sand dunes in that area, beautiful sand dunes, lovely area they enjoyed. And they were people who built houses. We are going to come to see how they were building their own houses and what happened and how much extravagance there was. Remember, as Allah gives you more sustenance, you need to become more charitable. When Allah gives you more, you need to give out more. And as you get more, you need to come closer to the earth. You need to become down to the ground. People must not be able to say this man is the richest man and then he walks past, he doesn't greet, nobody greets and there is like an A and a gap. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. We need to be people. When Allah has provided us, if we want to know that it is good, we will be people who come down to earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about these people. Allahu Akbar, Iram. That Imad is referring to either 
the height of the people as though they were tall pillars. Lam yukhlaq mithluha fil bilad. Like them were not created prior on land. Which means they were so huge. Allah says we didn't make anyone like that before. Number one. Number two is the homes they used to make were also huge like large pillars. Like that there was never before on earth. So both their stature, their structure and what they used to make and build in terms of homes. And both of those are correct because for a tall person you need a tall home with a ceiling that is very very high. Because he needs to be covered. He's not going to come bending into his home. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of that verse. Whenever you read that verse, and I'm sure we read it regularly, you should think of these people of Ad and how tall they were. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after making mention of how they used to worship asnam, asnam meaning idols, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the story firstly in Surah Al-A'raf. Straight, Allah says, Wa ila adin akhahum huda. And to the people of Ad, we sent their brother Hud alayhi salam. Why does Allah say Akhahum? Because he was from amongst them. He was one of them. And this is why nearly all the, the nations that were sent prophets, that prophet was one from amongst them whom they knew from the time he was born. So that they could not say this is an outsider, he's a foreigner, he's a stranger and so on. They knew this person. And he came up and then he warned as a messenger. And he was always known as truthful and honest and all the good qualities and so on. So Allah says, he says, Hud alayhi salam said, قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُهُ إِنِّي أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُهُ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Two different verses. Both of these verses, Allah says, He told His people, O oh my people, worship Allah alone without associating partners. For indeed, there is no deity worthy of worship, no one, none worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُهُ You don't have anyone you can worship besides Allah. This shows us that the issue of polytheism and shirk is the prime issue that all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with. Because that was the trap of shaitan. The biggest thing he wanted to deviate man with is the issue of association, of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he would laugh at the man and he would laugh at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, you see, I told you they won't worship you. They will either worship someone else or they will worship with you other things. So this is why all the messengers, you open the pages of the Quran, they all said, You don't have anyone worthy of worship besides him, the one who made you. Do you not fear? Do you not, not have any consciousness in you? So what did they say? First things first, the, the disbelievers and the haughty from amongst his community, they were all powerful people, wealthy. They began to say, you are foolish. We see that you are a foolish man. You're a fool. You're telling us not to indulge. What's wrong? It's our wealth. We are living. It's our life. Let us do what we want with whatever we want. And we'll build as we want and do what we want. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they were also amazed that how can a man come to us? If Allah wanted to send a messenger, he could have sent an angel. Why did he have to send a human being? And so this is why in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of how they said, مَا هَذَا إِلَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يَأْكُلُ مِمَّا تَأْكُلُونَ مِنْهُ this is just a human being like all of you. He eats whatever you people are eating and he drinks whatever you are drinking. There's no virtue for him over the others. My beloved brothers and sisters, when the message of truth comes to you, even if it comes to you from a child who is probably from a much poorer background for as long as what he is saying is right, you shall listen. That is the message. When we become arrogant and think, no, we're not going to listen to him because no, 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 he's from another clique or for example, he doesn't have enough money or for example, he's from a poor background. 
then we are losers. Because this is the same thing that happened to the messengers. They were not from loaded backgrounds. No, they had good lineage and at the same time they were known and they came with a message. So these people said, look, how can this person come to us yet he eats what we eat and he drinks what we drink. And they continued saying, in if you are going to follow a human being just like you, then you will be losers. Look at how foolish the statement is. Now there is something important in this story of Ad. They debated a lot with Hud alayhi salam. And also, they always went back to their cronies and their people and they began to tell them, look, we told him this, we said this, we said that, and he doesn't have an answer. Not that he doesn't have an answer. Common sense is an answer. You know what else they said? Is he promising you that when you die and you have become decomposed, that you are then going to be resurrected far, very far, is that which you are being promised. It cannot be a reality. Imagine. They are saying, how can he tell you that when you go down and you're going to be decomposed that you're going to come up my beloved brothers and sisters the lesson i learn and you learn from this sometimes we claim and we know we believe that we are going to be resurrected but the way we operate in our lives as though there's no day of judgment the way we carry on with all our bad ways we never bat an eyelid sometimes we never sit back to think but i'm drinking i'm clubbing i'm committing adultery i've got all these bad habits and at the same time, I'm claiming that there's a life after death. How on earth can that happen? So sometimes we join the ranks of these people without knowing. But then Allah has mercy upon us. He sends to us the month of Ramadan. He sends to us blessed days. He gives us a Jumu'ah. It is compulsory for you to attend and try and listen to the message. Allahu Akbar. Why? Because the message will be uttered to soften the hearts. To soften the hearts. So whenever we read these stories, let's not just think that those people, they said, how will we be resurrected? We believe in resurrection, but sometimes our lives are proving otherwise. The way we lead them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about what else they said. In hiya illa hayatuna dunya namutu wa nahiya wa ma nahnu bimabu'uthin. They told each other, look, this is just a life. Enjoy it as much as you can. We are alive and we will die. And that's it. There's no resurrection. <laughs> Same accusation as those who accused the prophet Noah. May peace be upon him. They said, this man has a jinnah. Has a jinnah. What is the meaning of a jinnah? Jinn. He is possessed. So don't listen to him. Another verse. Do you know what they said? We are not uttering anything except that some of our gods have caused this man to become mad. Because he's gone against our gods, so the gods have become angry with him, these stones have become upset with him, and therefore they have inflicted him with a mental disease, and now he's a mental case. That's what they're saying. Why were all these statements? Let me tell you why. Because these rich, wealthy people who had lots, who were big, huge, no sickness. They were massive people. They used to dwell in huge dwellings. We're going to get to the type of dwellings they had. They were scared that we are going to have to change our whole lifestyle because one man is telling us something. So rather than changing their lifestyle and securing the akhirah, they decided to secure the dunya and lose the akhirah. Now with us, sometimes we are sitting comfortable in our bad habits and so many things. And there comes a man and he starts reminding us, leave your drinking, leave your drugs, leave your gambling, leave your this, leave your womanizing, leave your bad habits, leave your lying, your cheating, your hatred, your deception, your so on and so on and so forth. And then we become upset. People who eat interest, you find a man saying, 
leave your interest and they say no 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 block that man stop that man kick him out throw him away well to be honest that's exactly what they did in all the previous nations and Allah gave them respite up to a certain time after that destruction was total so we must not become upset when someone touches the button no we must be happy what is meant by touching the button exactly what's wrong with us they're mentioning it don't say this man is attacking me or attacking this one. Nobody is attacking anyone. We need to realize it is Allah's message, just like all the others. The messengers were sent, they were direct, as we said. So now they started saying this man is a madman and this man is like this and he is possessed only so that the others would not listen to him. Because if one, two, five, ten, twenty, fifty people started listening, he would start getting a base and he would be able to attack. He would be able to become victorious over these. No. So what did they decide to do? Allah speaks about them in the Quran. Allah says, وَإِذَا بَطَشْتُمْ بَطَشْتُمْ جَبَّارِينَ فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُونَ Hud alayhi salam told them that when you seize, when you want to punish someone, you, you destroy them totally. You seize so powerfully as though you are tyrants. A Jabbar is a person who's killed a few people. He's known as a Jabbar. Someone who's killed more than one or someone who's killed more than two is known as a Jabbar, which means they used to kill off those who were weak and those who tried to go towards the message. And they used to kill off those whom they considered a threat. Nobody could tell them anything. Why? They were huge, powerful people and they were in the majority. Allahu Akbar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned them through the prophethood. But now I want to spend a few moments describing to you their houses. Allah says, are you those who used to build on the mountains on every high place you had your monumental home and palace what is a monumental home and palace they built palaces on top of the mountains huge palaces which they did not live in it was only known that mountains that house is for this man that house is for that man that house is for this man those were all on sand dunes and on the little mounts that they had they were not living in them so allah says are you building extravagantly these homes that you're not living in you're not going to stay in them and you becoming so indulged that you're forgetting allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allahu akbar and on top of that the next verse says and then in the valleys you build the little houses that you are going to live in in such a manner that you you think you're going to live forever you have taken these fine homes for yourselves as though you are going to live forever. Allahu Akbar. So imagine the houses. These people, they owned the mountains. They carved up at the top of the mountains a place for them to live. And not for them to live, in fact, for them to boast, to brag. That's my home. That one's my house. That one's the other one's house. That's the uncle's house. And so on. Allahu Akbar. Look, my beloved brothers and sisters, there is nothing wrong with owning a lot. There is nothing wrong with being wealthy. But the lesson is, the wealthier we become, the more down to earth we should be. The more we should be found in the masjid. The more we should be found giving charities. Subhanallah. That is when we will save ourselves from torment and from pain. And the lesson is for the rest as well. When you don't have much, there is a greater likelihood that you will be saved. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us savior. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us content with what we have. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about their size. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Remember, Hud alayhi salam is telling his people, remember that Allah has made you the successors of the people of Noah. Allah has made you the successors of the people of Noah. May peace be upon him who were destroyed completely. You are the successors and Allah has given you greater 
physical strength than them. So fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they started spreading a rumor that this man here, he's doing it for some ulterior motive. He wants some money. And this happened all the time. When someone came with goodness and related the message, they said, this guy must be making a lot of money out of this. That's why he's there. Allahu Akbar. Why? Why lay, lay accusations? So Hud alayhi salatu was salam says, Ya qawmi la as'alukum alayhi ajra in ajriya illa ala alladhi fatarani afala ta'qilun Oh my people, I'm not asking you to recompense me in any way whatsoever. My reward lies with the one who made me. Notice he didn't say ala Allahi. He didn't say my reward is with Allah. He says my reward is with the one who made me. Because he was calling his people to worshipping the one who made them. Who is Allah. But when you use the term my maker, nobody has an answer. Worship your maker. Worship your creator. Worship the one you are going to return to. What do we call him? We call him the worshipped one. Translated in Arabic as Allah from Ali Hayatlah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So sometimes when you use the word Allah, people think you're referring to a human, you're referring to an idol. I read an article once, not very long time ago, where people were trying to spread this rumor that Allah is actually, na'udhu billah, one idol that was remaining in the Kaaba at the time, and they call him Allah, and that's who the Muslims believe in, and that's why they, they prostrate to the Kaaba. No, we don't. We do not worship the black box at all. Not at all. The only reason why we face that direction is to create uniformity. Allah decided that this is where you will face. And the Quran says, virtue and righteousness is not achieved by which direction you face. Whether you face the east or the west. It's a verse in the Quran. But if you believe in Allah, then you've arrived. Then you have achieved righteousness and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So remember there are people who intentionally try to misguide others. We should be careful. And we should also convey the message to as many people as possible. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this Nabi, great Nabi, who was being tortured as well. He was being sworn at. He was being told so many things. One of the things he was told, he says, he was told that our forefathers did not come with what you have come with. So why should we listen to you? How can you go against your forefathers? Same thing. قَالُوا أَجِئْتَنَا لِنَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ وَحْدَهُ وَنَذَرَ مَا كَانَ يَعْبُدُ آبَاؤُنَا Are you telling us to worship one Allah and to leave these things that our forefathers used to worship? What lesson do we have in that? My beloved brothers and sisters, we've said it and we will repeat it. This is why Allah has repeated it in the Quran. Whatever we are doing, if it is right, Alhamdulillah. If it is wrong, no matter how many generations of our forefathers have been doing it, it will be wrong. So we should know when the truth comes to us, even if generations before us have been indulged in wrong, we should surrender to the truth. We will be securing our Akhirah. Like Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam told his father, he says, Oh my father, knowledge has come to me, which hasn't come to you. So follow me, I will guide you. Allahu Akbar. His father was too arrogant. He says, no, I'm not. Firstly, I'm making money from these idols. And secondly, who do you think you are? You're my son. How can you tell that to me? Allahu Akbar. Sometimes our children will go far beyond us in religion and in studies. They will come and they will tell us, dad, you're wrong. Mom, why don't you cover your hair? Do you know that that hair continues cursing you for as long as it is open in public? My beloved mother, cover it. This is a day of Ramadan. Make a decision for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the mother says, Hey, how can you talk to your mom like that? What is that? That is rejection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The poor son is coming, he's learnt a lot more. And he is coming to now obey the commands of Allah and to teach others the same commands. How can we reject it? This is why we always say that whenever your children have shown greater spirituality and they move further than you, encourage them. That will be a point of your encouragement as well. I have seen cases where the mother is semi-naked and the daughter is in full hijab. Mashallah. Now if we are going to be feeling, what, what word can we use? If we are going to be feeling bad or embarrassed, that's the word, embarrassed to walk with our own daughter 
somewhere just because she's dressed appropriately or walk with your son who's got a huge beard mashallah in the streets of new york why should we be embarrassed that's our child that's our son if allah has given them the courage to do that alhamdulillah if allah has given them the courage greater than us why must we pull them down to our level try and get up to their level and if you haven't had the strength to get right up there at least you support them and encourage them and cheer them on may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and may allah open our doors unlock spiritual enrichment with one islam tv app immerse yourself in a unique experience that is music free fully halal and continuously updated with fresh content daily enjoy a user-friendly experience with features that allow you to save your favorite videos create personalized playlists and download and watch your content offline download the one islam tv app now and embark on a transformative journey where faith and entertainment unite mm -hmm.